childhood. It's a time riddled with holes and blank patches in time, but every interaction and experience shapes us, positive or negative. We become the result of our learned boundaries. We have mechanisms that go unexplored because it's such a part of us, that to question it would be to wonder who we are, who and where we could have been. If a child were made to look but not touch, what would be the logical process of the adult? What if the child had been given no such command and was allowed to do as he pleased until it became a problem? But the first, in the liberation of adulthood, would understand that it's now his choice to look and that touching will incur a consequence. The second would no longer be under the control of a watchful protector and in the liberation of adulthood would understand that he only has to avoid being caught. What if one of the holes in childhood memory took away the time when the lesson was learnt, that no matter what, every action would have a consequence? Life would not be inconsequential, but it's the fear of consequence that would not exist. Assume that there is a person who, as well as not being afraid of consequence, lacked the ability to learn. No guilt or remorse, no achievements, simply existing in the present, with a limited memory of the past and a hollow concept of the future. The sights that that person might see. The experiences that would be life-changing to all, forgotten within minutes of its occurrence. Who is this man? This man who has no memory of anything, not even himself past childhood. He has a name, a date of birth, a pulse, a soul, a personality. But he has no history, no building blocks of life, no identity, he just is. Who are we without knowledge, without an acquired understanding of the world around us? Without a memory our thoughts would not develop, they would be in a perpetual cycle revelation after revelation, the same conclusions drawn again and again, the conclusions that secure our feet in the present. Every waking moment is a new life, an awakening after the longest sleep with all new sights, sounds, feelings. The feeling is overwhelming. It is both a blessing and a curse to experience everything for the first time, all the time. The joy of nature and its beauty for the sacrifice of never remembering it. Dealing with consequence of an action without knowing what was done in the situation surrounding it. It's easy to think of the trivial matters that surround memory loss. Forgetting where your keys are. Forgetting what time you were supposed to meet someone. But it's the things that you normal people don't forget that really cause the suffering. And not just to the amnesiac. Families destroyed because of the paranoid disposition of the sufferer, never really accepting his own family. You remember your close family, but not their faces or actions. The present doesn't continue long enough to rationalise the situation. Time passes. Minutes are lost again. Love is shattered, memories erased again for the mother and son, or a wife. So write the moments down, write every detail down, the time, the place, the people, write it all down. But what use is a record of a personal experience if you don't even believe the words? The words were written down before he was awake, before he was truly alive. They're the same handwriting, same style of documentation, but all from a time where thoughts were not present. Questioning this is not very wise. The man has all his mental faculties in order, but is in a constant state of confusion. 
knowing there is something wrong, but not being able to reason it. After a short amount of thought, the memory of it is gone. The confusion continues. This person shouldn't be left on their own. The damage that could be done to themselves, or people around them. The ironic thing is, he never questioned whether other people have memories. Never thought to ask and catalogue his life using the help of others. I suppose that just shows how, when it comes down to it, we will only ever believe ourselves. If we can't remember a time before right now, then could we justify having existed before that moment? Existence is a funny thing. Well, for me, proving it is. <laughs>